It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. It's Wednesday evening, July the 12th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Tonight we got crude, S&P, gold, euro, and FDAX in the newsletter tonight. Crude is bearish with a spike in range, telling us to look for selling opportunities using a two-legged correction up in the battle zone tomorrow. The S&P is bullish with a spike in range, telling us to focus on failures below the range and keep an eye on that fake-out, breakout, pullback to new highs. Gold is bearish with a triangle and a possible bow tie setting up for tomorrow, telling us to look for selling opportunities up at those resistance levels overhead. The euro is bearish and trying to retest yesterday's low, and a short-term trading range is telling us to look for bull traps up in that battle zone tomorrow. The FDAX is trading four legs up this evening. Big move on the tax. They finished off that pendulum swing we talked about in last night's newsletter. Now this tells us to expect some profit taking, and we're looking for a two-legged pullback off the highs for buyers to re-enter the market tomorrow. Boy, oh boy, we were got some big, big volatility today. Big moves across the board and big opportunities setting up for tomorrow. We're going to go day number two for Janet Yellen's testimony. We got some news on the schedule tomorrow. We got some great charts to look at and a great strategy for Thursday's session. Can't believe we're already talking about Thursday here, this second week of the month of July. Before we jump in, though, and take a look at the charts and put the plan together for tomorrow, I want to remind you, the only place to watch the full-length version of this video is on our blog here at SidewaysMarkets.com. If you're watching the video right now on our on our YouTube channel, not to worry. There's a link in the description of that YouTube video. Follow that link and come join me here on the blog for all five markets. While you're here, don't forget, join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening when the nightly newsletter goes live. Don't forget to follow me on social. Lower left-hand corner, pick your flavor of choice. Stock to its Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm always posting important links, charts, and updates throughout the week on my many different social media channels. Don't forget to grab those charts. One of the favorite parts of my clients about this newsletter is that all the charts are ready for you to download by following that link. Grab those charts. Have them ready on your computer for tomorrow. And you better grab that free pass. After you finish watching the video tonight, make sure you follow that link in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that free pass. Come out and join me tomorrow in the trade room as a guest. You're going to learn more with me in 90 minutes on that free pass than anywhere else on the interwebs. And please don't forget, I'm always here standing by to help you guys out 24-7, 365 if you've got any questions along the way. Boy, it feels great to be a trader right about now. What a great week we've had so far. Tomorrow, of course, another big day of learning and earning opportunities. Tomorrow's Thursday, July the 13th. No, I don't think there's any superstitions that right about uh, Thursday the 13th, right? So luckily for us, though, right, tomorrow's the 13th, but not Friday. Bottom line is tomorrow, major, major news tomorrow. We've got another, right, that second day. From Janet Yellen, we talked about this today, of course, right? We had Janet Yellen's testimony today. Tomorrow, of course, she'll be doing it again tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're not expecting to see as much from her tomorrow. Uh, she'll be doing the same song and dance she did today, and it was a pretty feisty little song and dance they had going on today. But the bottom line is, tomorrow will likely be a lot more, uh, a lot less dramatic of a reaction because you know she's already got everything off her chest already. We already pretty much know, right, what's going to be said tomorrow. There may be some bits and pieces tomorrow that catch people off guard, but I don't think you're going to see as big of a reaction like we saw today. We saw a lot of reaction across the board today as Janet Yellen started talking about interest rate hikes and things like that earlier on. So we're probably not going to see as much reaction tomorrow, but you do want to be aware of that news, right, that major news tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Now, of course, on top of that, we have your typical Thursday. We get jobless claims at 8.30 a.m. And of course, we're going to be hearing about inflation, right, producer price Prices index here tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, so make sure you keep an eye on gold and really anything that's tied to the U.S. dollar tomorrow around 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So 8.30 a.m., big news tomorrow. The biggest news, of course, being the Yellen testimony tomorrow, right, again, at 10 a.m. And again, you know, we saw some great volatility because of it today. Probably not going to see as much tomorrow, but we do expect, again, to see a bit of a slowdown up front. Like we said last night, slow down going into 10 o'clock and then shortly thereafter right we'll start seeing it pick up once she starts speaking 
Tomorrow's Thursday, so don't forget, Thursday during the summertime, be watching that volume towards the end of the day. Summer Fridays are always a bit of a, a bit of a half day for traders, so we may start seeing volume drop off late in the afternoon tomorrow. Don't push it tomorrow afternoon if things aren't moving well, right? Don't push it as we go into a Summer Friday. We'll talk more about a Summer Friday, right, in tomorrow night's newsletter. In the meantime, though, in the meantime, we got some work to do here tonight. News tomorrow morning. Let's get ready for it. We got crude, S&P, Gold, Euro, and FDAX tonight on the newsletter. And, of course, starting off tonight on the black gold, the Texas T. Right, crude oil is bearish with a spike in range, telling us to look for selling opportunities up above that range high using a two-legged correction or look for a fake-out breakout pullback pattern Right, as the market tries to make new lows. Now, one thing to keep an eye on tomorrow is that 45 big round number, which may be a sticking point for the bears and a possible trading range may develop. So focus on traps and buyer failures above that moving average if we start seeing the moving average go sideways right around that big round number most important thing here today as we recall from last night if you watch last night's newsletter we had a great plan ready for today strong spike up spike into a spike in channel pull back into that correction zone and then of course right they make the strong move up one leg and two legs up if you watch the newsletter from last night you were well prepared on the crude oil for this morning's session but then of course we had inventories this morning inventories came out right shortly after 10 30 a.m eastern time and the price dumped in response of it amazing how the market went right back to fill that price action gap that we talked about in last night's newsletter if you follow the newsletter you are ready to profit from today's price action now with that strong move down that strong move down I, I honestly think they kind of overshot that low a little bit just to get that price action gap filled because it looks like they kind of pulled the string on it and went right back up we then see them double bottom here so I'm going to call that that the spike and range you could you could I wouldn't argue with you if you called it a spike and triangle which we're going to see on gold here in just a moment as well I wouldn't argue with you if you called it a triangle the reality though is is we never went back down and rotated down to the low of that triangle so that little bottom right around 1325 that little bottom right there I've circled that is the clue that I'm using right now to call this a bear move into a trading range bear bias bear spike and range we talked about this in last night's newsletter if you missed last night's newsletter you missed a ton of great education last night on the newsletter so make sure you go back and watch the, and watch last night's newsletter not on the YouTube channel but make sure you go to sidewaysmarkets.com and scroll down and watch last night's newsletter because we talked in great detail about the proper ways to trade the spike trading strategy so with that said I'm watching the battle zone overhead that spike and range tells me I want to get up and back down or I want to go down and then back up right that's the key here right now we don't want to sell low so I'm keeping an eye on the battle zone right now for crude oil trading tomorrow one try two try and back down that's one scenario up above that trading range we always look for that two try rule to focus on failures another scenario we may just simply see a a trap and right back down right above that prior bear swing at 45.96 or you know what we might get a little bit deeper correction here we may see a bit of profit taking here and what we call a two-legged correction that two-legged correction of course will use that trend line right we'll use that trend line so that will give you a couple of options there to look for those selling opportunities but we definitely want to look for that selling chances right up inside that battle zone the hard part here tomorrow will be if the price just keeps going lower couple things you want to keep in mind right this is where the whole party began last night on the API report right which created that spike higher so we're already pretty much back to where the party began we do create right we do think of that as being the market's objective when the buyers failed so we've pretty much already reached the objective right now the sellers can afford to be a little bit choosy as far as where they get in my biggest concern is is the fake out breakout right back down then back up this make this may turn into a larger trading range tomorrow so be careful with trying to sell this thing low right I don't want to sell low down here what I really want to see tomorrow is I want to see a strong move down and then rather than selling down here right try to sell what I call right a, a little fake out breakout pullback get that moving average down 
And I'm not looking for the first. I'm looking for the second, right, to try to sell high. Ultimately, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to play the game against those buyers who will probably be looking to fade that move back down. What I'd really like to see is I'd like to see it just torch lower and then give us a chance here to sell high from there. The hardest part is going to be if it just dances around down here, right? If it just dances around. If it dances around down around that 45.11 to 45 even, you want to start thinking of this now as a larger trading range and really wait for – that rotation up so you can sell it down or really wait for that strong breakout and then use the fake out breakout pullback from there. So the moral of the story is be very careful down here because, again, it's pretty much the market's objective. We just want to try to get through it on strength or, right, again, if it kind of – if we start seeing – if we start seeing candles like this – Right, we start seeing candles like this, right, with big, big wicks on the bottom of them, right, then we know we're seeing price rejection and we're going to want to play this as that trading range, right, continuing here to sell high tomorrow. The ultimate goal here for those sellers would be a nice big measured move, but again, you got to really be careful, right, inside of that green rectangle there around that 45 big round number. How do we turn bullish tomorrow? How do we turn bullish tomorrow? Strength first, hold the pullback second. Strength first. Clear above that trend line, get that moving average up. I, I would really like to see it above that 45.78. Should be easy enough, though. It's not a very big range. And then, again, hold that pullback. And if they can, right, if they can hold that pullback, the objective at that point, pretty obvious, is to go back up and retest the high. Little bit too steep of a, of a drop to call this a pullback. So we've definitely got to look for this price to hold, right, and then we can be more confident being a buyer tomorrow. We made it through the inventory report this morning. Always a challenge on Wednesdays. Be excited for another big day tomorrow right in our trade room on the crude oil. Let's keep going. How about some S&P? S&P, boy, oh boy, that market took off. Now, the market reacting this morning to testimony from Janet Yellen about – and. I'll, I'll leave my opinion out of this, but whether or not she should raise right or increase right increase or decrease rates this year, uh, I think the market obviously spoke for us right and basically said that they approve right, whatever whatever she said today. Bottom line is we don't really care what happened today. Most important thing is the market reacted extremely bullish to it. We're bullish here. A spike in range. I wouldn't argue with you if you said it was a spike in channel. I think the most important thing though is is we have a spike. Anytime we have a spike. We know to play in the direction of that spike and look to buy low with traps and failures. So this spike in range, again, which you could call a spike in channel, I think the range fits better, tells us to focus on failures below the low of that range using the two-try rule while avoiding the fake-out breakout to new highs. The goal for tomorrow is to use that battle zone support area to look for buying opportunities. But if the bulls try and push higher, we need to stay patient for a successful breakout pullback with a target up to that prior month high. I'll tell you right now, the buyers are likely keeping an eye on that prior month high. They may have a difficult time getting there tomorrow because we have a quadruple measured move up here, right? So one, two, three, four legs higher. If you're an intermediate member of mine, if you've gone through our intermediate class, you know how to calculate right those quadruple ups. And of course, that's a major objective overhead. So buyers would love to get up around that 2450 area for tomorrow. The problem though right now is strong move up, pulls back, makes a new higher high, but ugh, that doesn't look too strong, as you can see, up around that 42 and three quarters. So, you know, the, 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 the kind of the textbook rule says if it makes a new higher high, then draw from there, but I'm just... I'm not I'm not seeing it. I'm going to call this a spike in range here for right now. Again, I wouldn't argue with you call it a spike in channel. So possible spike in channel, but lack of rotation, lack of real you know, lack of real strength to those highs. That's not usually what's going to be a spike in channel. So I'm looking at this as a spike in range. Spike up, trading range out. And just like we talked about on crude oil, right? This is the opposite direction now on the S&P. I'm looking at prior swings, 
prior swings, and that creates the battle zone. The battle zone, of course, right around that prior week high, which may end up becoming a level of support for us tomorrow. We'd like to, of course, use the two-try rule, one-try, two-try, to focus on failures. Right? It could be as simple as a trap low to be a buyer. It could be a little bit more complex, such as a strong move down. Bears try to hold the pullback. They fail, break out. And, of course, pull back back to those highs. That'll give buyers a couple options there, right, to buy low there. Hey, we may even get a deeper pullback. We may see it pull back even deeper here as the market rotates lower, right? Check out a two-legged pullback, right, just possibly below that battle zone. But the battle zone is really just an area of interest. And remember, I get questions every day. How do I learn more about the strategies we use every day in our trade room? Join the free trial. Great opportunity to learn more about the who, what, where, when, and why. Learn more about our strategies. See what it feels like to be a member in our trade room. And we don't forget, I've got beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels of membership, right? That way, everyone has a place, whether you're brand new or whether you're a grizzled veteran and you're still trying to put the pieces together on a consistently profitable trading career. Also, please don't forget, I'm always here to help. I've got live support on the homepage of the website, or you can always pick up the phone and call me here in Los Angeles at our corporate headquarters. The number is at the bottom of our webpage. If you're watching this video right now on our YouTube channel, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget, this is only a small snippet on the YouTube video. Not to worry, there's a link in the description of that YouTube video. Follow that link and come join me here on the on the website at schooltrade.com and learn more about what it means to be a client. Guys and gals, we do this together with all of our clients every day in our trade room, a great place to learn and earn alongside an experienced professional. Don't be a stranger. Keep in touch with questions. My name is Joseph. It's great to work with you guys and gals every evening in the newsletter, and I'll see you guys same time, same place tomorrow. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here, to Mount, be here in the manana. Adios, amigos.